Hi everyone, welcome to the joy of Dwarven painting. I'm Erin, and in these tutorials, I'll be showing you easy steps using Bacorni paints to paint your unpainted pieces to look more like the factory versions. And in this painting tutorial, I'll be showing you how to paint your Forsaken Temple pieces from Dungeon of Doom in the standard red and black paint scheme. All of the pieces use the same colors, but due to their varying design, the colors are used in different places for each piece. I will be walking you through the steps for most of the pieces individually. The first step is to dry brush the entire piece. This is using the same color as the dungeon wall's dry brush. The easiest way is using Bacorni Paint's Cavern Dry Brush straight out of the bottle. But if you want to match the factory version closer, we recommend using a mix of Caverns Dry Brush and School Bus in a 3 to 1 ratio. For tips on mastering the dry brushing technique, please refer to the tutorial on our painting playlist or the link in the description below. Once you've done this, let it dry and you're ready for the next step. The next step is filling in the center part of the wall front and back with Bacorni Paints Black. For this step, you're gonna to wanna to use the Bacorni Paint Brush in size three. Be sure to apply more than one coat so that the color is completely opaque. For the next step, you're going to be using Deep Lava. On the front part of the wall, you're going to wanna to paint the snakes completely red. Then on the back side of the piece, you're going to want to paint the flame motif red. With the Bacorni Paint Brush number one, you're going to want to take the Gorgon Bronze and fill in the frame details on the front side around the snakes and on the back side around the flame motif. And then for the final step, on the front and back sides, you're going to want to add lava yellow. This can be done using a Bacorni Paint Brush number one. On the front side, lightly dry brush the snake's belly. On the back, you're going to want to paint the top of the flame yellow, and then as you move down, use a dry brush to create a ombre effect. This piece is the Forsaken Temple Corner. For the corner, you're going to want to use the same steps that you used for the straight wall. Where it varies is the cauldron in the center with the flames. The next step is to paint the reptiles holding up the cauldron. You're going to want to use Bacorni Paint's Deep Lava to completely cover them. Now use a number three brush to dry brush the cauldron with Gorgon Bronze. Now I'm going to show you how to paint the Forsaken Shrine Wall with Fork Spike and King Cobra. We'll start with the Forsaken Shrine Wall. For the first step, you're going to want to use the same dry brush that you've used in all of the other pieces, avoiding the center front wall. Now you're going to go in with a number three brush in Bacorni Paints Black and fill in the raised box on the front side of the piece, the area encompassing both eyes, the archway, the flame motif in the center ring on the piece, and the center detail on the back of the piece. Now you're going to want to take deep lava and a number three brush and fill in the centers of the eyes, the center flames on the front, its ring around it, the flames beneath, and the flames on the back. Now we're going to take Gorgon Bronze and a number one brush and we're going to fill in details on the front and back of the piece. On the raised box, on the archway, on the back of the archway, the eye, everywhere you see an engraving, you're going to want to fill in with the Gorgon Bronze. Now using Bacorni Paint's Lava Yellow and a number one brush, you're going to fill in the flame details on the front and back of the piece, as well as pupils of the eyes on either side of the front. Now for the pole accessories on the top of the Forsaken Shrine Wall. For the fork spike, you're going to want to completely paint it black. Then you're going to want to go in with deep lava and completely paint the flame at the top of the fork spike. Then fill in the forks on either side of the flame and the base of the piece with Gorgon Bronze. The final step is to do a tiny light dry brush at the tip of the flame with lava yellow. For the King Cobra that sits on the Forsaken Shrine Wall, you're going to want to completely paint it black, allow for this to dry, paint deep lava on the belly, then you're going to paint the crown with Gorgon Bronze, finish it off with a dry brush to enhance those scaly details. Now we're going to paint the Forsaken Dais with removable back. For the Forsaken Dais, the first step is to completely dry brush the entire piece with the same dry brush used in all the other pieces. 
Then, after you've allowed the dry brush to dry, you're going to want to fill in the black areas of the piece. This includes the stairs, top of dais, and side panels. Also, the two diamonds on either side of the center, and the winding snake near the stairs. Then, once you've done this, dry brush the stairs with the same mixture that you originally dry brushed the piece with. Then, after you've allowed this to dry, you're going to want to go in with deep lava. Fill in the sections like the circle around the snakes on the top of the dais and the center of the eye on both of the side panels of the dais. Then, after you've allowed the paint to dry, you're going to want to add in Gorgon bronze into the details where you painted black. These parts include the lattice work on the top of the piece, surrounding the snakes, the two diamonds on either side, and the flame motifs on the sides and back of the piece. The final step is to fill in the pupil of the eyes on both sides of the dais with terracotta dry brush. Then, after you've done this, you've completed the piece. And now, the removable back. The first step is using Bacorni Paints Black. With a number three brush, you're going to want to completely paint the entire piece black. For the next step, you're going to want to use deep lava. Fill in the middle ring of knotwork with red, as well as the flames at the bottom and eye at the top of the piece. Then paint the outermost ring with gorgon bronze. For the final step, paint the pupil of the eye with terracotta dry brush. Don't forget to do the same exact thing for the other side of the piece. This is the freestanding forsaken wall, and in this piece you're going to want to be careful not to use too much paint on the piece because it has the finest detail of any of the other pieces we've covered thus far. The first step is using the dry brush that we've used in all previous steps in the forsaken temple. The next step is to use Bacorni Paints Black and a number 3 brush to fill in all the details that aren't stonework. Allow for this to dry before moving on to the next step. The next step is using Bacorni Paints Deep Lava to fill in the back motif, the snake goddess, the two flame motifs on either side of her, and the snake braid work at the bottom of the piece. The next step is using Gorgon Bronze to paint the insets in the center band, the top engravings, then you're going to want to lightly dry brush the Gorgon Bronze over the snake goddess, and then dry brush the back motif. The final step is using Bacorni Paints Lava Yellow. You're going to want to lightly dry brush with a number one brush at the very tips of the flames. Congratulations! You've painted the freestanding forsaken wall. This is the snake brazier, and I'm still Aaron. The first step, if I'm still Aaron, is to paint the snake brazier black. Paint over the entire thing except for the flame. The next step is to take deep lava and paint in the bellies of the snakes as they wind around the brazier, as well as the center hoods of the snakes. Don't forget about the inside of the belly behind the flame, that should be painted red as well, as well as the eyes on each of the snakes. For the final step, you're going to want to take the dry brush color and dry brush over the entire thing, except for the flames. For the Forsaken 4x4 floor, you want to want to use the same dry brush to cover the entire piece. Then, after you allow this to dry, you use Bacorni Paints Black and a number 1 brush to fill in the snakes. The final step is to take Bacorni Paints Deep Lava and fill in the center diamond on the floor. This is the Forsaken Snake Pillar. In this piece, you're going to want to dry brush the stone floor. Then, after dry brushing, you're going to want to take Bacorni Paints Black and completely paint in the snake pillar. After you've allowed the black to dry, you're going to want to take Gorgon Bronze and dry slather over the entire snake pillar. A dry slather is somewhat heavier than a dry brush, but not quite a fully wet brush, but not to be confused with a dry slither, which is what you hear when a minion of Sisul is slithering up behind you. And now for the ancient pillar. The first step is painting the top and bottom center ring and near bottom ring of the pillar with black. Using deep lava, you're going to want to paint the stem of the pillar as well as the second from the bottom ring. Then you're going to want to take stone edge dry brush and paint the third from the bottom ring with a number one brush. The last step is to dry brush the entire piece.
Thanks for tuning in. I hope this video helped you. Yeah, it was a full scale production. Now slither away and subscribe. Check out other videos in this playlist in order to learn how to paint your other Dungeon of Doom pieces. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.